Okay, for the first presentation, the, I invite Mrs. Ivanka Stoichkova, sorry, Waste Polymer Derived Carbon. Yes, uh, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, I will share my posters. In just a moment. Do you see? Yes, yes, but it's a little smaller. Maybe you can zoom on it when you speak so we can see the results. Okay, uh, dear colleagues, uh, my name is Ivanka Stoicheva. I am uh, from the Institute of Organic Chemistry with Center of Phytochemistry, Bulgarian Academy of Science. I will present uh, my poster with title Waste Polymer and Derived Carbons. Uh, so uh, many materials in everyday uh, life are produced from plastic and other petroleum derivatives. Uh, plastic mm, have inequal properties and strong uh, chemical bonds, which are not um, biodegradable, thus uh, contributing to environment and pollution after use. Utilization of plastic waste can be performed by using various methods of thermal destruction, uh, pyrolysis, ca catalytic cracking, gasification, hydro cracking. Uh, one of uh, the appropriate methods of uh, utilization of polymer waste is conversion by pyrolysis into carbon materials. So um, we we can uh, conduct our research with different polymer wastes. The greatest interest for us was the RDF sample containing uh, polyvinyl uh, hurit. Uh, the sample uh, was uh, taken from the waste uh, pr uh, processing plant uh, near Sofia, Bulgaria. Uh, synthesize of uh, carbon materials from such a kind of stirring materials created various uh, difficult uh, Mm. because the final product uh, contained a large amount of ash. The ash in the sample was approximately 60%. Uh, uh, the large amount of ash in the sample is uh, due to the inorganic impurities. However, uh, thanks uh, to the synthesized methods we developed, uh, we were um, able to synthesize a material with uh, high bed surface uh, area and um, develop a pore structure, which we successfully applied uh, to the absorption of various uh, metal ions from a drinking water. So uh, thank you for your attention. We thank you. Also, <laughs> okay, the next presentation is uh, of uh, Biliana Petrova with porous texture study of new carbon materials by low temperature nitrogen sorption. Hello to everyone. Did you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Just to try to share. Did you see? Yes, it's a little blurry, but. Uh... Yes, maybe maybe zoom on it a little on the results. Okay, but I I didn't hear. Ah, okay. Uh, so uh, you have a, a plus. Okay, plus. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay like that. <laughs> okay, you can start. Okay, my presentation is uh, about porous texture study of new carbon materials by low temperature nitrogen sorption. Uh, the relative performance of different porous carbon materials are highly dependent of its internal pore structure. 
And for better understanding and physical process taking place within a porous uh, medium, it's necessary to fully characterize the porous texture of carbon materials like pore volume, pore size distribution, the size of the specific surface area. And to ev evaluate the porous texture of porous carbon materials obtained in our laboratory, it was investigated by the amount of absorbed nitrogen at 77 Kelvin. Analyses were performed of quantachrome instrument, and the results obtained for pore volume, pore size distribution, the size of the specific surface area of porous carbon and carbon foam samples obtained from different raw materials and treatment conditions uh, are presented. As a catalyst support, active carbons has mainly advantage such as high surface area, a different pore structure and surface chemistry is resistant to acidic or basic media stability at high temperature in inert or reduction atmosphere, as well as ability to recover the supported active materials. And uh, it's view that from the, the results, we can find uh, which is the the dimensions of the pores, uh, micropores, mesopores, and from uh, these results, we can find the uh, we, we can evaluate for what we can use these carbon materials. Thank you for your attention. We thank you. If it's, there are no questions in online and here. We will uh, pass through the next uh, presentation. Laura Magdalena Cursaro is going to, to present uh, carbon nanotubes polyaniline composites, hydrothermal synthesis, and preliminary electrochemical characterization. Mrs. Cursaro. It's not. Is, is the next presentation of Claudio Rizescu, one pot uh, synthesis of silver modified layer double hydroxide with potential antimicrobial properties. Mr. Rizescu, please proceed. Uh, good evening. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good. I will start the screen sharing. Uh, yes. Uh, can you see the poster? Yes, it's perfect. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, uh, my name is Claudio Gizescu, and I'm today I'm going to present one pot synthesis of a silver modified layer double hydroxide with potential antimicrobial properties. In this work, we prepared a silver modified layer double hydroxide with potential application to the field of cultural heritage or um, biomedicine. Um, material and methods. Uh, the material was prepared by a modified co-precipitation method, started from the corresponding metallic nitrate salts and using sodium hydroxide as a co-precipitation agent. Uh, the obtained precipitate was aged and washed with distilled water to a neutral pH. The material was characterized by powder X-ray diffraction, Fourier transformed infrared spectroscopy and um, wavelength dispersive X-ray fluorescence. The antimicrobial properties of the material were investigated on the following microbial strains, gram-positive bacteria Staphylococcus aureus, uh, and the fungal strains Candida albicans, Aspergillus niger, and Penicillium chrysogenum. Um, the mat material characterization. In the X-ray diffractogram, we can see that the material consists present the diffraction-like characteristic to a poorly crystallized layer double hydroxide uh, phase, which uh, is characteristic to the multi-cationic layer double hydroxide, suggesting that uh, some amount of silver have entered the um, LDH structure. Additional diffraction line characteristic to a silver oxide phase could be observed. In the Fourier transformed infrared uh, spectra, we can see that uh, uh, other than the line characteristic to the um, 
vibrationals of the hydroxyl group and the water molecule, the band at 1640 centimeter to minus one and 1380 centimeter to minus one suggests that the interlayer of this material consists of both um, carbonate and uh, nitrate anions. The XRF results show that silver content and the ratio between the bivalent and trivalent material are close to the intended value and the no amount of silver was lost during synthesis. Uh, the antimicrobial properties were investigated and uh, uh, the materials show antimicrobial activity for all the um, strain uh, that were tested for. And in conclusion, uh, um, magnesium aluminum silver layer double hydroxide was prepared via co-precipitation method. Uh, the material consists of layer double hydroxide and silver oxide dispersed into its structure and uh, its microbial properties. Uh, but, uh, Candida albicans was the most sensitive to the inhibition of the uh, clay samples, followed by Staphylococcus aureus and uh, Aspergillus niger, niger uh, showed the highest resistance to this, to the effect of these materials. This study will be continued by studying the effect of loading in different types of silver modified layer double hydroxide. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, the next presentation will be made by Roxana Modelina Stoica. Uh, production and potential applications of biosurfactants. Roxana, if you are online. If not, we can go further to uh, Toma Agnes with uh, the paper entitled Characterization of Porous Biomaterials Based on Fish Collagen and Pectin from uh, Carrot Pulp and uh, Apple Peel for Tissue Engineering. No, then um, we have the next paper of Elena Mihai. Are you there? At least to know if you are there. No, uh, Christian Moisa. Yes, hello. Okay, so uh, the next paper we will be of Christian Moisa. He will present the synthesis of gold nanoparticles from lavender biomass as a sustainable resource. Do you see the screen? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, the presentation is entitled Synthesis of Gold Nanoparticles from Lavender Biomass. Uh, because nowadays, usually uh, in uh, the aromatic uh, plant, uh, we produce a lot of uh, essential oils and we have a lot of biomass waste that will become a significant issue. As you know, for many plants, you use several tons of uh, plant to obtain only one liter of uh, essential oil. Uh, therefore, we have a lot of biomass uh, material that is still uh, rich in uh, secondary metabolites. Uh, we only extracted the terpenes, but we still have polyphenols and some uh, alkaloids, uh, depending on the plant. So in order to obtain uh, gold nanoparticles, we extracted the phenolic compounds from the uh, biomass materials using uh, uh, an infusion method. And um, further, we obtained the gold nanoparticles using uh, uh, one millimolar solution of tetrachlorouric acid uh, reagent. Therefore, we uh, analyzed the chemical composition of the uh, extracts by HPLC and uh, also the antioxidant activity uh, through DPPH and FRAP method, and also the total phenolic content and flavonoids. As you can see from the results, uh, the uh, waste material uh, compared to the uh, lavender plant without uh, processing are similar in composition. Therefore, it is a good source of uh, 
synthesis for gold nanoparticles. Uh, here you can see the synthesis, the uh, solution turned from a pale yellow to a bright pink, uh, which means that we have gold nanoparticle synthesis and it's further confirmed by the UVV's uh, analysis. Uh, on the scanning electron microscopy, we can see the gold nanoparticles uh, are in different sizes, uh, spherical and also platelets of uh, uh, bigger size. And uh, through EDX, we determined that the main uh, uh, elemental composition is uh, gold. Also, we uh, analyzed the chemical composition of the extracts, both extracts from biomass and uh, unprocessed plants, and we can see that uh, the chemical compositions are almost identical. And uh, the chemical composition of the gold nanoparticles were also analyzed through um, uh, ATRF tier. We also did uh, uh, microbial analysis, uh, microbiology analysis, and we uh, analyzed uh, bacterial growth rate and bacterial inhibition rate for uh, several um, for several strains: Staphylococcus aureus, Escherichia coli, uh, Influenzae, Listeria monocytogenes, and Bacillus cereus. Uh, as you can see, uh, almost all extracts are, have. Uh, uh, bacterial uh, growth, uh, high bacterial growth rate, and only the nanoparticles uh, from the waste materials have uh, inhibition against E. coli. Uh, they are not uh, good antimicrobial agents. But uh, the biomolecules recovered from post-distillation uh, waste extracts uh, are uh, good uh, sources for eco-friendly reactions because they don't uh, produce uh, um, dangerous uh, leftover reagents and they are accessible, safe to handle, and they uh, are represented by a vast range of metabolites. Thank you. Welcome for, uh, oh, welcome. Thank you for this presentation. <laughs> He's very late. <laughs> okay, uh, Diana Ioana Buliga is uh, present. Yes, I'm here. Uh, okay, you... so we uh, invite you to present the recovery of natural pigments with uh, potential application in cosmetics and food through conventional and unconventional methods. Uh, yes, can you please tell me if you are seeing my screen? Yes. Uh, no, uh, previous was better, a little bit. Uh, okay. So, so, okay. Is this better? Yes, it's perfect. Okay, uh, good evening. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, today's poster presentation is focused on the extraction of phycocyanin from spirulina plantesis. Uh, it is a microalga with important valuable compounds such as proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and natural pigments. Amongst these, we encounter chlorophyll, carotenoids, and phycocyanin. Uh, the latter can be used in various foods and cosmetic formulation, but can also be seen as an environmentally friendly coloring solution, which can successfully substitute brilliant blue. Sorry. Uh, the extractions were carried out using powdered spirulina and the phosphate buffer. The employed methods were both conventional and unconventional. In all cases, several parameters were varied and the obtained extracts were centrifuged prior to the spectrophotometrical analysis. Uh, firstly, for the conventional extraction, the influence of time and temperature was studied. At lower temperatures, such as room temperature and 30 degrees Celsius, the phycocyanin content increases in time until a plateau is reached. At higher temperatures, we here used only 40 degrees Celsius. The phycocyanin is extracted more rapidly, but thermal degradation occurs as we can all see in figure one. 
uh, in this case for the conventional extraction, the maximum was reached at room temperature after 270 minutes. Uh, I will go here so you can see the graph. Uh, next, for the ultrasound assisted extraction, the influence of time and sonication mode was studied. When a duty cycle of one second on and one second off was used, a higher amount of the targeted compound resulted after 15 minutes. Following this point, degradation occurs and the same happens when using the continuous mode as intense sonication leads to denaturation of the targeted compound. Finally, uh, for the microwave assisted extraction, the focus was on the influence of time and temperature. Better results were obtained at 40 degrees Celsius, where a maximum concentration was, uh, was reached at 30 minutes. Increasing the temperature with 10 degrees led to the degradation of uh, phycocyanin after only 10 minutes of treatment. To sum up, <coughs> So spirulina is an important functional food with a probable future in the dyeing industry. The aim of this study was to establish the best extraction conditions for phycocyanin, and our data show that these are obtained when using the ultrasound assisted extraction for 15 minutes and the duty cycle of one second off and one second on. So thank you for your attention. So if there are any more questions, I will be happy to answer you. Thank you very much for your presentation. So if you if there are questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the following presentation will be of Catalin Bilbier, uh, the validation of a snack product with added functional ingredients using descriptive sensory analysis. So Catalin. Are you here with us? No. Uh, and the last presentation will be of Elena Utoyu. Utoyu. So are you here? Okay, we uh, also wanted to know if uh, uh, Irina Petreanu is here. Yes, Connected. I'm here. Okay, then uh, you can uh, uh, have uh, the time uh, that we uh, have now to present your poster, eco-friendly method for mesoporosilica synthesis. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I'll try to share my screen. Um, do you see my poster? Yes, yes, we can see it. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. My name is Irina Petreanu. I want to present an eco-friendly method developed for synthesis of mesoporous silica. Um, in the synthesis of mesoporous silica, we start from, uh, from a precursor tetraethyl orthosilicate uh, and use a surfactant, a surfactant cetyl, uh, trimethyl ammonium bromide uh, with role of for forming template. Um, after the first stage of synthesis, uh, when uh, silica network uh, was formed around the CTA AB cells, uh, the template might be removed from silica in order to empty the pores. Uh, um, to this effect, the silica particles uh, were treated in the microwave in acidic solution of dioxan uh, or um, in acidic solution of ethyl alcohol at um, 110 
60 degrees for two hours. Uh, this uh, removing uh, the template using uh, uh, thermal treatment in microwave oven and uh, um, in acidified ethanol solution is our uh, improvement in order to realize an eco-friendly synthesis. We synthesized and analyzed three samples of mesoporous silica. Um, this, uh, this is, uh, these are uh, um, named uh, MS1, uh, consists in silica obtained and obtained in the first stage of synthesis, of synthesis with pores filled with uh, surfactant. Uh, the second samples was uh, mesoporous silica uh, with uh, empty pores, uh, surfactant CTAB being removed by boiling in uh, acidified solu dioxan solution at microwaves. And the third um, uh, sample was uh, mesoporous silica with um, uh, template removed by boiling in acidified ethanol solution at microwaves. Um, we analyzed these three samples by elemental analysis and observed and noticed that um, um, at uh, the samples um, treated at the microwave, the percent of um, nitrogen, carbon, and uh, hydrogen decreased. Uh, in almost the same uh, proportion. This uh, decrease after the removal of um, CTAB template was, was noticed also in um, EDX uh, um, analysis. See uh, table two. Uh, where the, the percent of uh, carbon is um, smaller than uh, uh, for the compound um, with uh, pore uh, filled with um, surfactant. The microstructures um, of silica samples was um, determined by um, electronic microscopy. And um, uh, and um, Crystalline structures um, was uh, reflected by um, XRD spectra. Uh, in the XRD spectra, we um, uh, noticed the presence of three peaks at small angles. Uh, this pattern being characteristic for hexagonal distribution of pores. We can see, uh, we can say that uh, microwave assisted rem uh, removal of CTAB in the acidified ethyl alcohol solution could be used as environ environmental friendly method for mesoporous silica synthesis. Um, I thank you for your attention. And if you have uh, some question, please.
Thank you, Mrs. Petrano. If there are some questions regarding this presentation, please. If no, thank you. And I will ask again if uh, the other uh, participants, Laura Madalina Cursaru, if is present. Roxana Madalina Stoica. Toma Agnes. Mrs. Elena Mihai. Catalin Bilbie. And Elena Utsoyo. If no, we thank you for your attention, for your participation, and uh, we would like to close this session and we welcome you tomorrow to, and we invite you to participate. Uh, tomorrow at the plenary and the oral presentations. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Bye.